is a widespread lack of knowledge about uh, climate change, about just how nature works. I think people need to become more aware about things that actually matter to the future of life on this planet. My name is Jason Box. I'm a climatologist and a glaciologist. I've been studying Greenland for the last 20 years. What's fascinating studying Greenland ice is that the ice tells us a story. The, the ice educates us because ice is such a sensitive responder to climate. It indicates climate. So what we do is we set up equipment to monitor the ice and then we listen to what the ice tells us. Greenland ice is indicating climate change. It's very clear that story, the, the way that the ice reacts. So in my opinion, um, we bear witness to abrupt climate change today. I've been surprised in recent years that the surface of the Greenland ice sheet is an ecosystem for microbial activity. There's, you know, countless uh, algae uh, cells and these microbes and they are important because they darken the ice, they feed back with climate, the more melting there is, the happier the microbes are and they darken the surface. Anything that darkens the ice uh, increases melting because of sunlight uh, being absorbed by this darker material. Climate warming gives the microbes uh, more um, of a foothold so they can thrive and the impact is another example of, of the ice melting faster than forecast. For the last 8,000 years, the changes of Earth's orbit have produced a cooling trend in the northern latitudes especially. And what humanity did with the Industrial Revolution was turn a very gradual cooling trend that was taking us into the next ice age. And we went uh, kind of on a rocket out of this uh, gradual cooling trend. So uh, human activity has prevented the next, next ice age and an ice age would not be a good thing. The problem is though that the, the warming that we've produced is also too much in the warming direction, which then uh, brings up the obvious question, well, you know, what thermostat level do we need to be stable? And the answer is, it's about the average temperature during the, the Holocene climate, that's the last kind of 8,000 years. That's the temperature that we want. Uh, otherwise, it's hothouse earth in the warm side and ice age, either extreme we don't want. There's lots of reasons to think that we are doomed. We can't really stop climate change uh, at this point unless we bring down atmospheric carbon below 350 parts per million, unless we do a complete re-transformation of our economic system. Uh, it sounds like science fiction, but it's something that we need to do for the sake of our kids and nature that surrounds. We're in deep shit. We have to dig out of this. And what actually matters is re-establishing a two-way relationship with nature. We need to respect nature, give back to nature, um, sustain nature, restore nature. Uh, individuals can do uh, a lot uh, by altering their diet or their travel patterns or, or planting lots of trees, uh, but that's not enough. You know, we can't all ride bikes and short showers aren't going to get us there. Uh, we need government to do its job and that's to protect the future. Think about a world with cleaner air and water. Uh, think about a world where you don't have oil spills and, and fires from you know, crashing oil trains. That world is possible. Uh, we just have to uh, overthrow some of the influence, uh, entrenched economic interests interest that, that want to keep the status quo as is, even though the status quo is killing the planet, killing the, the, the ecosystems. I have this, this kind of ray of hope in a, in a dark, uh, stormy world uh, with all kinds of mayhem going on. There is a way out. 
uh, we need to get on that train and go in, in that direction. We know where we need to go. It's a, it's a question of can we make others see the, the benefits of, of making the, the right decisions for, the, for, for all. When I was a kid in Greenland, I uh, discovered or I realized that all rocks are different and there must be a reason why they're all different and I wanted to understand what is it that makes them different, how did they become you know, what they are. I'm Minik Rosing, I'm a professor of geology at the University of Copenhagen. One of the most interesting uh, topics that I've been working on is uh, whether you can use a material from Greenland, a mud from Greenland, basically to save the planet. Because we all know as geologists that in the tropics, because it's warm and humid and has been so for hundreds of million years, the uh, small rock fragments that used to be in the soil have all been uh, dissolved by the warm water and, and leached all the nutrients out of the soil. So you just have this red tropical soil left, which is actually very, very infertile. It's very poor in nutrients. Another thing that is happening here in Denmark, in America, and many other places is that because agriculture now is very intensive, we are able to extract more nutrients out of the field, and that means that we are depleting the soils. And it's particularly, it's something that uh, derived from urbanization. In uh, maybe 100 years ago, everybody would uh, eat the whatever from the field and then it would go shit in the field and every, the nutrients would be returned. But nowadays, everything is actually taken from the fields in some part of the world into a city in another part of the world, and the nutrients never return to the field. So therefore, we need something to return nutrients to the fields and this could be our rock, rock plow. The idea is that there's this rock plow, this very fine rock dust that is made by the Greenland ice cap, is actually just mechanically ground up rocks uh, from the basement, from the, from, the, from the mountains of Greenland. And that means that all the nutrients that plants need are still in this material. And because it's very, very fine grained, it means that the nutrients are very easily accessible by the plants. So, on the one hand, in the Arctic, we have a resource that is unexploited and not useful where it is. And in the tropics, we have a desperate need for it. So we can merge these two, we can change two problems into one solution. There is an enormous amount of rock flour in Greenland, and we don't know exactly how much, and we don't know how much of it can be exported, but it is, I would say, it's, it's, it's practically a limitless resource. We know that there's more than one billion tons coming out uh, from the glaciers every year, and that is put on top of similar amounts that have come out through the past 10,000 years or whatever, so that is a lot of it. There's more than a million tons every day new coming out. And the way to gather it is, it's suspended in water, but because it's small fragments of rock, when the water stops flowing, these small fragments start to settle and they form big layers of clay, and particularly in the fjords and the, at sea, when this comes out, the sea water is relatively calm and still, and it settles and you form what everybody knows as a big delta, and this delta just keep moving out and building more and more mud on top of what's already there. We can use it to revitalize uh, soils in the tropics that have been exhausted from all their nutrients, and I think that that's, that's, that's potentially very, very interesting. We don't know if this is a viable idea, but uh, we hope it is, of course, but we are doing the research right now to find out exactly how viable is it, because there are many barriers that might uh, limit the application of this or maybe even hinder it altogether. So uh, we need to find out all these and, and, and give answers to these questions before we can tell. I think the climate change is actually not very responsible for the research I'm doing, but the climate change makes it much more necessary for it to be successful. So therefore I hope that we come out with positive and successful results because if um, the way that everything is changing on, on this planet and also as we are becoming more and more people, the need for uh, good sustainable solutions to provide food for everybody, but also maybe potentially to uh, lower the greenhouse effect in the atmosphere by forcing the biosphere to, to take up carbon dioxide from the atmosphere.
it's not caused by climate change, but climate change makes it very necessary.